Hello everyone, well myself Dr. Rajeshwari HV, working as an assistant professor in chemistry JSS College Gokak. In this uh, video, I will be handling unit 1 that is chemical energies and chemical equilibrium 1 of BSc second semester uh, syllabus which is one of the important topic in physical chemistry. Now let us review the thermodynamics and the laws of thermodynamics. And you have already learned this in your lower sections. Now, the first question arises is, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is basically derived from the Greek word. Thermo means heat and dynamics means flow. So, thermodynamics implies flow of heat. So, thermodynamics is defined as, it's a branch of science which deals with energy changes accompanying all types of physical and chemical processes that is basically thermodynamics describes the conversion of heat energy into different forms of energy. Now thermodynamics depends on the two important generalizations that is first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. Apart from this we also have third law of thermodynamics and zeroth law of thermodynamics which is in turn derived from the second law of thermodynamics. So that is why thermodynamics mainly depends on the two important generalizations that is first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. And there is absolutely there is no formal proof for these laws. It is only based on the human experience. Yes, now let us state the first law of thermodynamics which is commonly known as conservation of law of conservation of energy because the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed although it can be transformed or converted from one form to another. The conversion of one form of energy into another form is 100% according to the first law of thermodynamics. Now, energy and mass is conserved according to first law of thermodynamics. Now, what is the need for proposing the second law of thermodynamics? The first law of thermodynamics has many drawbacks. The first drawback of first law of thermodynamics is, it does not predict the spontaneity of any process. Now, what is the meaning of the word spontaneity? Spontaneity means Anything that happens on its own is known as spontaneous, spontaneity or it is also known as feasibility. So based on that we can say the reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. If the reaction occurs on its own, we say it is spontaneous reaction. If the reaction does not occur on its own, then we say it is non-spontaneous reaction. Now that is the first uh, drawback of first law of thermodynamics. It will not predict anything about the spontaneity of the reaction. It will not say whether the reaction occurs on its own or not. And the second drawback is it, it will not say anything about the direction of the any physical and the chemical process. And the third drawback is it will not say anything about the extent to which the energy can be transformed. If one form of energy can be completely transformed to another form, whether it is 100%, whether it is less than 100%, the extent of conversion is not explained by the first law of thermodynamics. The first law says, uh, says that energy and the mass is conserved. In fact, practically it is not possible. So one form of energy cannot be converted into another form 100%. Because during the conversion, some amount of energy is always wasted. You can take an example of simple uh, fan. The, the fan will convert the electrical energy into the wind energy. Definitely this conversion is not 100%. Some amount of energy will be always wasted. So these are the drawbacks of first law of thermodynamics. And this is the need for the second law proposing the second law of thermodynamics. Now the second law of thermodynamics can be proposed in many ways. There are five important ways of uh, proposing the second law of thermodynamics. The first way is heat itself can
cannot flow spontaneously from cold body to hot body and the second way of uh, defining the second law of thermodynamics is all spontaneous processes always tend to change in a direction leading to the equilibrium then third way is heat cannot be transformed completely to work and the fourth way and the easiest way of defining the second law of thermodynamics is in any engine 100% efficiency is not possible some amount of energy is always wasted so the fifth way of defining the second law of thermodynamics is in any spontaneous process entropy of universe that is system plus surrounding increases the very important concept given by the second law of thermodynamics is entropy it is represented using the symbol capital s and change in entropy is represented using the symbol delta s now what is entropy entropy is the measure of randomness or disorder of the system so we can easily understand this with the help of uh, uh, three states of matter that is solid liquid and gases if you come in case of gases the molecules can move in all the directions so randomness is maximum in case of liquids liquids can take the shape of the container the randomness is minimum less compared to the gases whereas in case of solids the atoms or the molecules have a fixed position the randomness is least so randomness increases from solids liquids and the gases no hope you have understood different ways of defining the second law of thermodynamics and the important concept given by the second law of thermodynamics so the fourth definition is quite uh, easy and it will explain the important uh, importance of second law of thermodynamics very easily so let me define that once again in any engine 100% efficiency is not possible some amount of energy is always wasted because when one form of energy is converted to other form the conversion cannot happen 100% so some amount of energy is always wasted this efficiency of a heat engine or any engine is explained using the carnot cycle in the future topics as i said uh, previously thermodynamics solely depends on two important generalizations the first and second law of thermodynamics the third law of thermodynamics is in fact derived from the second law of thermodynamics itself so it can be stated as entropy of a perfectly crystalline state is zero at absolute zero kelvin so we'll discuss the meaning and the importance of third law in the future topic right now you try try to remember all the three important uh, definitions that is first second and three third third law of thermodynamics now the next question arises is what is the importance of thermodynamics and why we have to learn thermodynamics so thermodynamics uh, is basically derived from the two laws as i said the first second and uh, second law of thermodynamics and many important uh, generalizations that is van der waals law of dilute solutions rolls law of vapor pressure lowering distribution law law of chemical equilibrium phase rule and law of thermo thermochemistry and all these generalizations are derived from the first second and third law of thermodynamics the second importance of thermodynamics is thermodynamics helps to predict the feasibility or spontaneity of the process so remember students if you want to analyze any chemical reaction we need two important concepts one is the chemical uh, kinetics uh, another one is thermodynamic aspect one is kinetic aspect other one is thermodynamic aspect the kinetic aspect will tell the rate of the reaction what do you mean by rate of the reaction whether the reaction is fast slow or moderate reaction can be predicted only using chemical kinetics whereas thermodynamics using thermodynamics we can predict the spontaneity or feasibility of the reaction as i told previously what is the meaning of the spontaneity the processes that occurs on occurs on its own is known as spontaneity so through thermodynamics we can say whether any reaction occurs on its own or not so that is the main advantage of the thermodynamics so well the third important uh, 
uh, application of the thermodynamics is we can predict the extent to which a chemical process including the chemical or any physical process can takes place the meaning is we can find out or predict the yield of the product using the thermodynamics then the next question is what are the limitations of thermodynamics thermodynamics applies only to matter in bulk it will not deal with any individual atoms or the molecules it will discusses the group of molecules or we can say the assembly of the molecules or the assemblage of the molecules that's why we say that the thermodynamics applies only to matter in bulk not to the individual atoms or molecules then the second important limitation is as i told previously thermodynamics will not say uh, will not say anything about the rate of the reaction so what is rate of the reaction so it will the speed of the reaction or rate of the reaction so i have given few examples here so we can see the first reaction is hydrolysis of methyl acetate it is acid catalyzed to give acetic acid and ethanol is a moderate reaction which occurs in laboratory and decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to give hydrogen and oxygen is also moderate reaction rusting of iron is a very slow reaction and the reaction on the ionic reaction between agcl and kno3 to give agno3 and kcl is a very fast reaction because all ionic reactions are fast reactions now we have we, we come across different types of reactions in day to day life so some are very fast some are very slow some are moderate reactions this speed or rate of the reaction cannot be predicted using the thermodynamics that's why we make use of chemical kinetics to find the rate of the reaction so thermodynamics only says whether any reaction occurs on its own or not that's why thermodynamics depends on the initial and the final state we are frequently using the words spontaneity and feasibility now let us understand the meaning of spontaneous process and non spontaneous process let me first define what is a spontaneous process a process which has natural tendency to occur either on its own or after proper initiation under given set of conditions is known as spontaneous reaction in a simple words we can say that any process it may be physical and chemical which occurs on its own is known as spontaneous process so in spontaneous process may occur without uh, with a proper initiation and there are some processes which occurs without any proper initiation so let me give some examples below and all natural processes are spontaneous and are irreversible in nature so all natural processes like burning of fuel is spontaneous but it is irreversible in nature well students hope you have understood the definition of spontaneous process let me quote some examples the first example is evaporation of water is spontaneous then dissolution of sugar in the water to form solution is spontaneous the reaction between nitric oxide gas and oxygen to form the nitrogen dioxide is also spontaneous and these three reactions will not require any initiation without any initiation the reaction is spontaneous and there are some reactions which require initiation say for example the burning of coal to give carbon dioxide will not uh, it will occur on its own but after proper initiation so these are the few examples for the spontaneous reaction now the second term what is non spontaneous reaction the process which no natural tendency to occur on its own is said to be non spontaneous reaction in a simple words the process that do not occurs on its own is known as non spontaneous reaction the examples i have quoted here the flow of water uphill okay, water cannot flow uphill it will always flow downhill and the flow of heat from cold body to hot body is quite impossible and electrolysis of water is non spontaneous reaction so this is all about the spontaneous and non spontaneous reaction and let us come to the examination corner so these are the few questions that have been frequently asked in the examination like state second law of thermodynamics apart from this you also remember the first and uh, the third law of thermodynamics and 
define spontaneous process with an example define non spontaneous process with an example or two marks questions and in the next video i am going to discuss all the basic terminologies that comes in thermodynamics thank you